With Season 1 of Diablo 4 fast approaching, it is time to brush up on the best leveling route and techniques, which by the way is generally going to be quite different from how most players level up at the launch of Diablo 4. And first of all, if you've already been playing Diablo 4 and have completed the main campaign, you will not have to do it again once Season 1 starts on a new character. And aside from that, any map exploration progress you've unlocked prior to Season 1 will also carry over to Season 1. And also, even on top of that, all of your Altars of Lilith will also translate to Season 1, not only in terms of the bonus stats that each grants, but also the renown that you get from them. And that renown, alongside any of the exploration renown you've gotten from opening up the map, you'll actually be able to get a significant head start and thus bonus skill points and potion charges even right at the beginning of Season 1. And if you haven't completed these objectives yet or finished the main campaign yet, you still have a couple of weeks to do so. Or even if you wanted to just get started after Season 1 started, you can still do say Altars of Lilith and uncover the map while you progress through Season 1 as well and not be too far behind. And with that, assuming you're starting a new character having completed the campaign, or even if you've just completed the campaign and are looking for ways to continue leveling, the general best way to progress is to actually not only level up, but try to progress your renown at the same time, and as such, try to stack as many of the two that you can do together at once, right? For example, if there are side quests, that you can do and say a dungeon that you can run that involves that side quest that would generally be one of the priorities for that moment of leveling right and even though technically speaking speed running some of the same and most efficient dungeons might actually be the fastest way to strictly just level up it'll actually put your renown progress behind wherein when you get into world tier 3 and world tier 4 where there are other better activities to do being the hell tides and nightmare dungeons you'll not want to spend as much time progressing your renown, right? Which means you would rather do that during World Tier 2 before you head into World Tier 3. So in other words, you would rather do most of your renown and get it out of the way before you head into World Tier 3. You can still do some of it and finish up during World Tier 3 and even World Tier 4, but you want to get ideally a significant chunk done in World Tier 2, which by the way is sort of tackling two birds with one stone by leveling somewhat efficiently and also doing a renown anyway, right? That you will definitely have to do at some point for the very significant power boosts that it gives you. So again, you'll want to be stacking as many side quests, which are of course renown granting with dungeons and preferably dungeons that have helpful aspects for your build, right? Which will increase your power further. And by the way, I provide a link below for the specific dungeons that do come with associated side quests for your reference. Anyhow, when you're targeting aspects though, you don't necessarily have to go for dungeons that have side quests, right? Obviously, because if you're going to be needing the aspect for much more power and efficiency, you'll be doing it anyway. Plus, doing a dungeon will still get you good experience and allow you to work towards renown a little bit more too. And aside from stacking side quests in dungeons, you can also stack side quests with outdoor events and especially events that also come with whispers from the Tree of Whispers, which are sort of like bounties that if you collect enough of by doing these objectives, you'll be able to collect a cache of rewards which can also be helpful for your leveling by providing you quite a bit of rares that you can by the way also imprint with legendary aspects which can really greatly speed up your efficiency. So for experience, the Tree of Whispers and the Whispers bounties in general are not going to be that significant but the rewards they give can certainly be helpful. And as for any really specific leveling route or like zone progression route, the current way would be to start in the Fractured Peaks until you hit at least around level 10 and level 12, after which you start meeting the minimum monster levels of Act 2, which is Sconslin. And then after you reach about level 26, you'll be able to, again, match the monster level, the minimum monster level of the Dry Steps, followed by Halbazar, and then finally Kajistan. That is the current implementation of things. So once you meet the minimum level of each zone, you'll be able to just have more options for any of this aforementioned stacking, right? Again, of like side quests, dungeons, collecting legendary aspects from dungeons, even strongholds, of course, and also Tree of Whispers, Whispers. So currently, only after reaching those specific levels will you be able to have just more of these options across 
Sanctuary, right? However, this might not actually be the case anymore with Season 1, as was heavily implied in the recent dev interview covering Season 1. Someone had mentioned that you'll have to start in Kyobashad or Act 1, to which one of the developers strongly suggested that that might not actually be the case anymore. They didn't say when, but I would not be surprised if it was implemented for Season 1, meaning that if you can get to start in any zone that you want, namely probably if any of these minimum monster level requirements were removed, that would make things even easier and grant you even more options, and even like super efficient dungeons even, like Ulder's Cave and Sirocco Caverns in Kedistan, which were previously only runnable after say level 45-ish, right? Although again, you can't just simply run those dungeons, although you will get lots of experience, but you will be missing out a lot of renown, which is crucial as well. And coming back to renown, one crucial way to progress it is of course strongholds, which I haven't really talked about yet. But anyhow, as soon as you meet any of the minimum level requirements to do any stronghold, you should go and do it as soon as possible. Not only just for the 100 renown, which is massive, to that zone that you get, but also for the additional, say, waypoint and dungeons that you unlock with it, and even side quests. And on top of that, and very importantly as well, with each stronghold that you unlock, you gain an additional place that you'll be able to participate in one of the timed gathering legion events, which on its own, by having more access to these events, it'll be a huge experience boost as well because each of these Gathering Legion events are great for experience and also get you some decent loot and ovals as well. And speaking of timed events, of course you want to do the world bosses as soon as they come up because they're just really quick to tackle generally speaking at least. I'm not really sure if at the beginning of the season people will actually struggle against them but they probably shouldn't. But anyhow, world bosses can give some experience and more importantly, some decent legendaries and aspects that you might still be missing. And they will be a great source of that, especially at the beginning of the season. Now, once you get close to level 50 and have ideally done a decent chunk of your renown, you'll want to make sure that your build and gear is strong enough to be able to tackle not only the capstone dungeon, but also, of course, the next world tier, which is world tier 3, right? And both kind of have a similar difficulty. So again, doing the dungeon or even just the first part of the dungeon and you can leave afterwards if you're not strong enough is a good way to gauge your current power. Now, you can also get carried through this by stronger players. And the same also applies to the next capstone dungeon to progress into world tier 4. But I actually don't think this is that beneficial because if your gear and your levels are way too far behind, even if you get carried, you won't be able to farm the next world tier efficiently anyway. Especially hell tides, which are going to be really important as you enter into world tier 3 and then world tier 4. Because in hell tides, if you die, you lose your currency to open your chest, which means if your power level is too behind, you really will not be able to do hell tides efficiently at all, which means you will have to power up anyway. Not to mention, even though the more powerful sacred items and then ancestral items in world tiers 3 and 4 respectively will start dropping in each, you'll actually apparently need a minimum level to not only equip them, but also to gamble them from the purveyor of curiosities, making you much less able to be able to cheese and get levels of gear that are way beyond your character's level. And with that, to conclude, the gameplay loops of World Tiers 3 and 4 are somewhat similar. I would say in World Tier 3, you would be much more focused on hell tides and getting sacred items rather than farming nightmare dungeons, even though nightmare dungeons offer great experience, so you can still do that. But I would do more of that in World Tier 4 as the glyph experience becomes much more efficient after World Tier 4 tiers of nightmare dungeons. And as you wrap up World Tier 3 and get into World Tier 4 and are around level 70 and above, You'll be wrapping up your renown and also be fleshing out your build with ancestral items as well as the best roles on your good legendary aspects. You'll also start getting more unique items in World Tier 4, which might be really helpful or make possible certain builds as well. And of course, you'll be leveling up as per usual, mostly through Nightmare Dungeons. And by the way, in determining the tier to farm your Nightmare Dungeons at, if you're looking for the most experience and efficiency, going for monster levels that are about 3 levels above yours is a great place to start. You can scale up from there, and the way to calculate it would be 54 on World Tier 4 and 53 on World Tier 3. So you take either 53 or 54, 
plus the tier level of the Nightmare Dungeon, and that equals the monster levels that will show up. And next, if you did a lot of health hides through World Tier 3 especially, and some in World Tier 4, you should have enough forgotten souls that are useful for upgrading your legendary items later on. And speaking of upgrading your items for a bit more power during your leveling journey, don't forget that items have an item power breakpoint as well, which if you cross that breakpoint, you'll actually be able to get higher stats and sometimes even re-roll your stats just by upgrading an item if you cross through the threshold of that item power. And I'll link a resource below for the respective item power breakpoints as well. And that's pretty much all I wanted to share with you regarding the best ways to level up and progress at the start of Season 1. And I also happen to have another video detailing how best you can prepare for Season 1 as well as the specific mechanics and gameplay changes that will be coming with it. Anyhow, that video will be linked in the description box so you can definitely check that out. And with that, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to check me out on twitch.tv slash and I will catch you in the next video. Peace.